Hi, I'm Edward Smith, retired squadron leader, served in the Royal Air Force from 1976 until 1995. And I'm visiting the Royal Air Force Museum today for the first time for several years. And I've seen all the changes they've made here with new exhibitions and uh, the new displays. This photograph of me was taken in 1988 at Royal Air Force Chivener when I was the parade commander for the annual inspection. At that time I was an instructor on number one tactical weapons unit as an instructor pilot on the Hawk. My initial operational experience in the Royal Air Force was on this uh, Phantom FGR-2 aircraft. Not this specific one, but this type. I served on 19 squadron in RAF Germany from 1979 until 1982. The Cold War was at its height and we were in the thick of it, I think it's fair to say. This magnificent aeroplane was uh, quite a sh shock to me after the Hawk training aircraft which I'd flown beforehand and I wasn't expecting to be assigned to the Phantom but I'm so pleased I was. It was quite a magnificent aeroplane for a 22 year old fighter pilot to be flying. It has two seats, it has reheated engines, it has missiles which I'd not been introduced to before and the gun of course. It's 38 years ago this month that I last flew a Phantom and I feel stepping into this now that I could fly it again. This is a mix of strength, force, power and fantastic handling capabilities and it's a challenge to fly. You had to really be on top of it to keep it safely airborne. Navigator in the back, he had to just put up with what I was delivering in the front. Favourite thing to do with a navigator was to accelerate to very high speed with the throttles rocked outboard like that, reheat engage, have up to 600 knots speed and then take it out of reheat quickly. And the aeroplane seemed to stop instantly and the navigator who had been looking over his radar would hit his head on the radar scope. We were flying a, a combat exercise at high altitude over Belgium and I got the aeroplane, this aeroplane, into a vertical manoeuvre to try and to outmanoeuvre the opponent. Whilst I was flying it into the vertical with full engine power, I was looking to see where the other aircraft was. And at that time I'd lost track of the speed we were flying at. And we were fast running out of speed. In spite of all the power, we were flying now below a normal flying speed. I realised this too late to do anything other than gently close the throttles and let the aeroplane fly out of this manoeuvre. We were in the vertical and I was able to just to pull it through the vertical and it dropped on its back at almost no airspeed at all and stabilised in a descent. And as we accelerated, got back up to flying speed and we lost about 10,000 feet in seconds. My navigator was one of the best on the squadron and the best combat navigator and he sat through it like nothing was happening. A few years later, after I'd flown this, I was uh, fortunate to be chosen to fly the F-16 with the Americans at uh, the 4th Fighter Squadron, the Fujins, at Hill Air Force Base in Utah. That was uh, an operational squadron which, uh, within a year of my arrival, was sent to fly and uh, fight in the Gulf War. The first missions we flew were with 40 aircraft launching off from the same base. We did this in cycles of uh, one aircraft every 20 seconds. We had the best equipped F-16s in the theatre with a GPS navigation system. And so we could identify position, we could see the targets and then identify exactly where that target was and give that information to other fighters that could follow along with their own weapons and uh, attack the target. And we became known as the Killer Scouts and uh, we flew about 800 missions as killer scouts and our squadron could maintain surveillance across the uh, battlefield area for 12 hours a day in, in all daylight hours.